My help cometh from the Lord which made heaven and earth. He will not suffer thy foot to be moved. He that keepeth thee will not slumber. Behold, he that keepeth Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is thy keeper. The Lord is thy shade upon thy right hand. The sun shall not smite thee by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord shall preserve thee from all evil. He shall preserve thy soul. The Lord shall preserve thy going out and thy coming in from this time forth and even forevermore. God is good and all the time. Psalm 100 verse 5, for the Lord is good. Israel, when God blesses us, he's good. When he punishes us, he's good. When he answers our prayers, he's good. When he says no, he's good. Psalm 145 verse 17. The Lord is righteous in all his ways and holy in all his works. In other words, God cannot do anything wrong. Everything he does is right. Good evening, everyone. How are you? It's nice to see you. Thank you for coming to the house of God to listen to his word. With equal sincerity, I welcome those watching online. Wherever you are, thank you for joining us. If you are not a Seventh-day Adventist, and you're connecting online, thank you very much. We are specially honored by your presence. Now for those of you in this building, who is not a Seventh-day Adventist, may I see your hand. Would you stand so we can see you? Would you stand? Stand standing. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you, God bless you my dear brother. God bless you. Anyone else? Ah. God bless you. God bless you. Thank you for coming. May the Lord place his hand of mercy upon your lives and never remove it. You may be seated. Everyone now from the bottom of your heart, let's say amen for our friends. Yeah, what do you say? Monka, amen. say it again. Amen. One more time. Amen. God is good. Amen. And all the time. How many of you love God? Can I see your hand? Let me put up two hands. I love God. Good, 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 good. But I also like God. God is a very nice person. I don't offer scientific proof. I have no scientific proof. I have personal proof that God is a good God. Our subject for this evening, friends in high places. What was our subject last night? Now, and then you see, all those in favor, all the Omar say, I. I hope you haven't changed your mind from last night. Oh, GDS, I want to sign what you're in front of As usual, if you're not using one of these, make sure it's turned off. Sir, one far or mobile phone, no, and yeah, here, but what the answer will be tomorrow. Wherever you are, preserve reverence. Be a will be a no, man, need him. Because we're in the presence of the God of heaven and earth. Favor number two, while I'm speaking or we're speaking, pray for us. All I want you to say is, Lord, put your words in their mouths. Jeremiah chapter 1 verse 9. 
Jeremiah then the Lord put forth his hand and touched my mouth. And the Lord said unto me, Behold, I have put my words in thy mouth. When God sent Moses to speak to Pharaoh, God told Moses, Now therefore go, and I will be with thy mouth and teach thee what thou shalt say. I want God to be with our mouths and teach us what to say to you tonight. Let's borrow. Well, number the third favor. As you listen. Isaiah 1:18. Isaiah Come now, let us reason together, said the Lord. God is a reasonable God. The devil is unreasonable. God is reasonable. Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, we bow in your presence to thank you for the gift of life. We thank you, dear God, for sustaining us during the week that just passed. Now, dear God, despite what most of the world is doing, we are in holy time. We thank you for the Sabbath of the Bible. We thank you for the Sabbath, which is your day. We thank you, Lord, for the privilege we have to assemble to worship you. Forgive us for our sins, I pray. I really mean that, dear God. Forgive us for our sins. And give us that grace, that power to avoid those sins in future. I humble myself before you, dear God. And I ask you to sustain me in your right hand. And my brother who's interpreting. And my sister who's signing. Uphold us with the right hand of your righteousness, dear God that we might be fit instruments that the message may be delivered clearly and with understanding. Bless everyone who's watching, listening, dear Father, particularly our guests, those who are not Seventh-day Adventists. We're happy to have them. And I ask you to bless them, dear God, in a very special way. Remember little boys and little girls who are watching. They are not too young to give their lives to you, Father. Touch them as they listen. Bless the sick. If anyone has COVID-19, dear God, heal those persons 100%, I pray. And for other ailments and aches and pains, bring significant relief. We are in the country of Ghana. Bless this host country in a very special way. Bless the leaders, dear God. May they make decisions that are advantageous to the spread of the gospel. Bless every Ghanaian, wherever he or she may be on this planet. But Father, also bless the nations represented by those who are listening and watching. Now, dear God, I commit this service to your glory. Do as you will. Receive all the honor. Give us the blessing, dear God, I pray. In Jesus' name, let God's people say, Amen and Amen. Our subject, friends in high places. Let us go to James chapter 2. We'll read from verse 21. The book of James, James was a half-brother of Jesus. James James chapter 2, reading from verse 21. I'm reading from the King James Version of the Bible. The Bible says, Likewise also, was not Abraham our father justified by works? Sanso and Asu Abraham our ye ye jano ye muni bimu ewo inyumemu. When he had offered Isaac his son upon the altar, a brow or deni ba Isaac ekoto aforibu chiano so. Seest thou how faith wrought with his works, and by works was faith made perfect. Na she seni e jidi e enam inyumaso ba ye na inyumaso enam jidi e so ewi e pe ye. And the scripture was fulfilled which saith, Abraham believed God and it was imputed unto him for righteousness. And he was called the friend of God. Now using our common sense, if Abraham is a friend of God, God is a friend of Abraham. And Abraham. Let me say that again. If Abraham is a friend of God, 
It means that God is a friend of Abraham. Abraham had a friend in high places. Abraham but why was Abraham called a friend of God? Let us go to the incident that James is writing about. Genesis 22, reading from verse 1. And I hope you're concentrating. Genesis 22, reading from verse 1. And it came to pass after these things that God did tempt Abraham and said unto him, Abraham, and he said, Behold, here I am. And he said, Take now thy son, thy only son Isaac, whom thou lovest, and get thee into the land of Moriah, and offer him there for a burnt offering upon one of the mountains, which I will tell thee of. And he said, Isaac, now I don't know. God told Abraham, offer Isaac as a burnt offering. Verse 3. And Abraham rose up early in the morning. Abraham And saddled his ass. And took two of his young men with him. And Isaac his son. And Isaac. And clave the wood for the burnt offering. And he rose up and went unto the place of which God had told him. About. Abraham began responding to what God had said. And it came to pass on the third day the Bible said, a that Abraham lifted up his eyes and saw the place afar off. And Abraham said to his young men, Abide ye here with the ass. I and the lad will go yonder and worship and come again to you. And Abraham took the wood of the burnt offering. And and laid it upon Isaac his son. Abraham fired or the man and took the fire in his hand. And the Janan Casa would be good a year just a man so on Pedicutis and of fast a kind. So they went both of them together. Omi and Nantikoi. Verse 9. And they came to the place which God had told them of. And Abraham built an altar there. And bound Isaac his son. Isaac. Or laid the wood in order. And bound Isaac his son. And laid him on the altar. And the wood. I would Then Abraham stretched forth his hand and took the knife to slay his son. And of yes, come in Look at all the things Abraham did. As he responded to God's command, he rose up early. Oh, sorry, in term. Took two servants. And were found in Kwame, you know. Cut the wood for the offering. And the general will be she and what to try. Walk up Isaac. And we're going to need about Isaac. Saddle the ass. And we're doing a turn on the proof. Started the walking. And we're almost asked. Yes, we're more. Came to the place. And I'm called baby and you're me. Built an altar. And we'll see a for a Put the wood in order. And we did be on to two years. Tied up Isaac. And we're teaching about Isaac. Put him on the altar. And we're not a for a butcher. Took the knife. And we're fast. Second. Raise his hand. And we're pigeon in, sir. To kill his son. So we couldn't ban him. All these things he did in response to God's command offer Isaac for a burnt offering. Now keep that in mind and go back to James chapter 2. We read from verse 21. Our subject, friends in high places. Let me pray again. Holy Father, restrain me, dear God. Remind me I am in this pulpit for your glory and your glory alone. Restrain my carnal nature, I pray. In Jesus' name, amen. James 2.21 Likewise also was not Abraham our father justified by works. So, Papa Abraham, What were the works? He got up early. 
saddled his ass. And I feel sick in the flume. Cut the wood. And the child, chose two servants. And the fan came. You know, woke up Isaac. No, can you know Isaac? Started walking. And the man said, "I saw a moko." Came to the place. I'm about to be in your mind. Built an altar. And the seer for a butia. Arranged the wood. And the did not know to two seers. Tied up Isaac. And the child, Isaac. Stretched him on the altar. And the chain. And the tour. I picked up a knife. And the fan said, "I was about to kill him." Now, but why should I say so? All these things he did. Can you imagine now? Yeah, you know. The Bible calls them works. Bible, a friend of Enuma. Or acts of obedience. Because of that, the Bible says Abraham was called the friend of God. Bible says Abraham because he obeyed God. If you say if that's clear, say amen. He obeyed God. In detail. Let's look at Noah. Let's go to Genesis chapter 6. Genesis 6, we'll read from verse 14. This is God giving instructions to Noah. Make thee an ark of gopher wood. Room shalt thou make in the ark and shalt pitch it within and without with pitch. And this is the fashion which thou shalt make it of. The length thereof shall be 300 cubits. The breadth thereof, 50 cubits. And, and the height thereof, 30 cubits. A window shalt thou make to the ark. And in a cubit shalt thou finish it about. And the door of the ark shalt thou set in the sides thereof. With lower, second, and third stories shalt thou make it. God gave Noah all these instructions. Now read verse 22. Of Genesis 6. Thus did Noah. Bible can say, say and a Noah. According to all that the Lord commanded him. So did he. Oh yeah, yeah. This is the obedience God wants. Now listen to how Noah is described in verse one of Genesis seven. And to ba Moses who made the contents on the move back one. Yes, and the Lord said unto Noah. The Yamme catch the Noah say. Come thou and all thy house into the ark. For thee have I seen righteous before me in this generation. If he says, I want to atwas when you know when any part me who say we are training. Look at Genesis chapter seven, verse five. Five. And Noah did according unto all that the Lord commanded him. Now Noah no pepepe. Whatever God said, Noah did. Noah ye. What Abraham, what God told Abraham, 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 no, Abraham so yeah. God called Noah righteous. He called Abraham his friend. Our subject is friends in high places. Let's go listen to Jesus. John 15, we read from verse 12. Our subject, friends in high places. It's about 7.30 or so. We have a lot of time left. John 15, reading from verse 12. This is my commandment. That you love one another as I have loved you. Greater love hath no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. Ye are my friends. If. 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 Finish the verse. If ye do. Whatsoever I command you. Why was Abraham God's friend? I didn't know Abraham. Because Abraham did. If you say Abraham, yeah, what God commanded. Yeah, him. By the way, the God who spoke to Abraham in the Old Testament was Jesus Christ. And Jesus tells us tonight. And Would you like to be my friends? Obey me. 
Wouldn't you like to be a personal friend of the president? So on pesa wo be ye o mampeni adamfo. Yes. You would have privileges. E no die wo ye akwama bebre wo ho. You would travel in the motorcade. So wo ko be bia bo se moto di wonu pee 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 na do ko. Every side with lights flashing. Ban sa bo se motorcycle di ben kumi ni fa na wo hwe fin fin. People snapping to attention. Because you are a friend of the president. If you say where your president is down for the God of heaven and earth. He wants a friendship with you. He said there's one condition. Obey me. You just me. Ye are my friends. If you do, whatsoever I command you. Friends in high places. Now go to John chapter 13. Let's read verse 35. As we switch to another phase of this message. I believe it's John 13, 35. By this shall all men know that ye are my disciples if ye have love one to another. Now, stop and think. Jesus says, Jesus say, here is how you can identify a child of mine. They love each other. By this, shall all men know that you are my disciples. If ye have love, one for another. Here is what some churches say. By this shall all men know that you are my disciples if he speaks in tongues. That's what church is saying. That's not what the Bible says. I want to take a close look at tongues as we continue with friends in high places. The issue of tongues is a very contentious one in modern Christianity. And it is a point on which multiple thousands are misled and deceived and are displeasing the God they're supposed to be worshipping. Let's see what the Bible says about tongues. Let's go to Acts chapter 2. We we'll read from verse 1. Acts chapter 2, reading from verse 1. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord and in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. And, and there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as a fire, and it sat upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. The, the Bible says they began to speak with other tongues, tongues different from their own. Verse 5. And they were dwelling at Jerusalem, men, devout Jews out of every nation under heaven. Always read the Bible microscopically. Notice what verse 5 says. And they were dwelling at Jerusalem, Jews, devout men, out of every nation under heaven. And each nation had its language. So we have real nations represented. Now when this was noised abroad, the multitude came together and were confounded. Because that every man heard them speak in his own language. 
When tongues were spoken at Pentecost, the various citizens from other nations, they heard in their languages. Which means there was understanding. Comprehension. The gift of tongues is to provide comprehension, understanding, edification. And they were all amazed and marveled, saying, Behold, are not all these which speak Galileans? The multitude is saying, These men who are speaking are Galileans. How hear we every man in our own tongue? Notice verse 8. They heard the message in their language. The apostles were speaking legitimate languages. To strengthen the point. The writer of Acts gives us some of the nations that were present. Elamites, Elamites, Cappadocia, Cappadocia, Judea, Judea, Pontus, Asia, Pontius, Asia, Phrygia, Phrygia, Pamphylia, Egypt. Egypt to four. Parts of Syria, Cyrene about Libya. I feel Libya and Cyrene. The parts of Libya about Cyrene. The parts of Libya about Cyrene. Libya, I find a Cyrene for her. Strangers of Rome. I feel a whole way through Rome by Jews, proselytes. Jew for her and I feel one more Indian year so a whole. A sampling of the nations. And to Obamodia, Cassano, who do I know who might understand. People understood. It wasn't just babbling and noise. People understood. And there's a reason for that. Let's look at one of the purposes for the gift of tongues. Ephesians chapter 4. Ephesians 4, verse 9. Ephesians 4. Reading verse 11. And he gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and some teachers. Now listen carefully. For the perfecting of the saints. For the work of the ministry and for the edifying of the body of Christ. Every gift was intended to contribute to the building up of the church. Now keep the word edifying in mind. And go with me to 1 Corinthians 14. Corinthians 4, 1 Corinthians 14, we read from verse 1. Follow after charity and desire spiritual gifts that ye may prophesy. For he that speaketh if in an unknown tongue speaketh not unto men but unto God, for no man understandeth him. Howbeit in the spirit he speaketh mysteries. If you're in your home, in your closet, and you're talking with God, and the spirit comes upon you, and you start talking a strange language, that's fine. It's just you, and God in a private setting. Keep this in mind, in a private setting. Verse 3. He that prophesieth speaketh unto men to edification and exhortation and comfort. Notice the word. Edific. Prophesieth 
for edification, exhortation, and comfort. We have two activities. Prophesy. Speak in tongues. Let me say that again. Prophesy. Speak in tongues. Verse 4. He that speaketh in an unknown tongue edifieth himself. But he that prophesieth edifieth the church. The purpose of the gifts was for the edification of the church. God gave the gift of tongues for the edification of the church of the church. So we have prophesy and speak in tongues. Now my brother and I, right now, what we're doing is prophesying. It simply means speak for God. That's what we're doing. But we're not speaking in tongues. Now listen to verse 5 of 1 John 14. I would that ye all speak with tongues. Let me pause. You notice something in that statement? Paul says, I wish that you all spoke with tongues. Which means, they did not all speak in tongues. Churches today tell you, you're not born again unless you speak in tongues. Paul tells us clearly, there are some who do not speak in tongues. I would ye all speak with tongues, but rather that ye prophesied. So Paul says, I prefer that you prophesy than speak in tongues. Listen to the next statement in that verse. For greater is he that prophesieth than he that speaketh with tongues. So Paul says, here are tongues, here is prophesying. Prophesying is greater. But most churches make a big fuss over tongues. The Bible says prophesying, what we're doing is higher. Let's finish verse 5. For greater is he that prophesieth than he that speaketh in tongues, except he interpret that the church may receive edifying. What Paul is saying, whenever tongues are spoken, there must be interpretation. Let's see that very clearly. Let's go to verse 27 of 1 Corinthians 14. Verse 27 of 1 Corinthians 14, our subject, friends in high places. Jesus says, by this shall all men know that you are my disciples, if ye have loved one for another. Modern churches say, by this shall all men know that you are my disciples, if ye speak in tongues. That is wrong. 1 Corinthians 14, verse 27. Let me pray again. Dear God, this subject is sensitive. Some people are already angry. But Father, do all you can to open their eyes to the saving truth. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. If any man speak in an unknown tongue, let it be by two. Or at the most, three. Are you listening to me? If any man speaking tongues, let it be by two or at the most, three. Now, if you have the King James Version, notice the next few words. And that by course. Which simply means... 
one after the other. The Bible does not call on churches to speak in tongues all at the same time, one after the other. And most times, only two. If any man speak in an unknown tongue, let it be by two, or at the most, three. And that by course. Look at how verse 27 ends. And let one interpret. Whenever tongues were spoken in public, and I say in public, there had to be interpretation. Listen to verse 28. But if there be no interpretation, let him keep silence in the church. And let him speak to himself and to God. How can you read something so clearly and go do what people do on Sunday mornings all over this world? The Bible says where tongues are spoken, if there is no interpretation, keep quiet in the church. Verse 29. Let the prophet speak two by two and let the other judge. So one speaks, another speaks, and one interprets. And the church listens and learns as the interpretation is given. Listen to verse 30. If anything be revealed to another that sitteth by, let the first hold his peace. In other words, if someone is speaking in tongues and the spirit reveals something to someone else, that person gets up to say what it is. The first person has to keep quiet because it was not supposed to be done all at the same time. Verse 31. For ye may all prophesy one by one. That all may learn. And all may be comforted. Now why one by one? And just two or three. Verse 33. For God is not the author of confusion. What is the confusion? Everyone speaking at the same time. The Bible says, God is not in that. Now let me be a little tough. If God is not in it, who is in it? Mm-hmm. If God is not in it, who's in it? God is not the author of confusion. That's why he says one at a time. And only two or three. Let's go to 1 Corinthians 12. We read from verse 8. Our subject Friends in high places. You know, there's a text in the Bible that says, In vain do they worship me. Teaching for doctrines the commandments of men. Any church where everyone speaks in tongues, so called tongues, at the same time, is worshiping God in vain. Any church where tongues are spoken and there's no interpretation is worshiping God in vain. 1 Corinthians 12, reading from verse 8. 
Let's look at this claim that every believer must speak in tongues. For the one is given by the Spirit the word of wisdom. If you say, to another, the word of knowledge by the same Spirit. So the Holy Spirit gives wisdom to him and knowledge to him. Faith by the same Spirit. The gifts of healing by the same Spirit. Working of miracles. Prophecy. Discerning of spirits, diversity of tongues, interpretation of tongues, a different gift for different people. In other words, the Bible teaches not everyone who spoke in tongues could interpret. Someone else had to interpret sometimes. Go to verse 28. Of 1 Corinthians 12. And God hath set some in the church. God hath set some in the church. First, apostles. Why does he say first? Because the gift of apostleship is much, much higher than the gift of tongues. If you say, First, apostles. Secondarily, prophets. Thirdly, teachers. After that, gifts of healing. Then miracles. Helps governments, administrations. Now, there's a series of questions you have to answer. The Bible will ask them, you answer. Answer honestly. Are all apostles? I can't hear you. Are all apostles? Are all prophets? Are all teachers? Are all workers of miracles? Have all the gifts of healing? Do all speak of tongues? Do all interpret? The Bible is telling us not everyone speaks in tongues. And so to tell people that the evidence of your conversion is speaking in tongues is present a teaching that did not originate from God. Wherever you are, listening to us, the Bible teaches us wherever tongues are spoken, there must be interpretation. Listen to the Apostle Paul. Let's go to 1 Corinthians 14. We read from verse. 18. Our subject, friends in high places. I thank my God I speak with tongues more than all of you. Paul said, look, I can speak in tongues more than you. Listen to verse 19. Yet in the church, that's public, in the church, I had rather speak five words with my understanding that by my voice I might teach others also than 10,000 words in an unknown tongue. Paul says, I prefer to speak five words Paul that the says, church understands than 10,000 words that nobody understands. My listening friends, the speaking of tongues is a genuine spiritual gift. But the Bible gives guidelines for the way it must be practiced. Let's review what we've learned. Not everyone has the gift of tongues. The only person who had all gifts in himself was Jesus. And he never spoke in tongues. What else have we learned? 
It is the spirit that decides who gets which gifts. Many years ago, I went to a, I was pastoring a little church. And we were renting a building. So I went to take the rent to the local pastor. It was a Pentecostal pastor. And when I got there, he was at the front pew with a young lady trying to get her to speak in tongues. I am telling you in the presence of God what I saw. And he told her, come on, come on, come on. He's right there. No, see, you don't want you don't want he's right there. Yeah, 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 yeah. God is my witness. And the young lady never said anything. You cannot teach someone to speak in tongues. Now, you can teach someone to speak rubbish. Is this microphone working? It's working. <laughs> you, you can teach someone to speak rubbish. But you cannot teach someone to speak in tongues. It's a gift that's given. When you have the gift of tongues, you don't have to go to the University of Ghana. The Spirit gives you all you need. But that gift is given to certain people, not to all. My brothers and sisters, those who speak in tongues, where the whole church is speaking at the same time, and no one is interpreting, that worship is rejected by God. When the Israelites worship the golden calf, Exodus 32. They dedicated that worship to God. That's what Aaron said. Tomorrow is a feast to the Lord. How can you dedicate idol worship to God? They thought they were worshiping God. And why they were doing that? God was telling Moses, I will kill all of them. When you are in a church where everyone is babbling, nobody understands what anybody else is saying. Not even the person speaking understands and cannot repeat the words. This is offensive to God because it is contrary to thus saith the Lord. If you are part of a church where people speak in tongues only on Sunday morning, they never speak in tongues on Tuesday or Thursday. When you have a gift, it operates all the time. Not just on Sunday morning and at 11 o'clock. If you are part of a church that practices this unbiblical style of tongues, leave that church because God's judgment will come on that church. I say again, leave that church because God's judgment will come on that church. As verily as God was about to destroy the Israelites for worshiping the golden calf. God will pour out his wrath upon churches that make a mockery of the gift of tongues. We must obey God's word. Let the prophet speak two by two or no more than three. Obey that. Let one interpret. Let one obey that. If there's no interpretation, keep quiet. Obey that. Speak one at a time. 
obey that. And also do so. Now listen to Jesus. He is my friends. If you do, whatsoever I command you. God has told us through the writings of Paul that the tongues as a gift must be practiced a certain way. When you obey Christ, you become a friend of Christ. And it simply means that Christ is your friend. And in Christ, we have a friend where? In Christ, we have a friend where? What's our title? In high places. I want to extend an invitation to those of you listening who are not Seventh-day Adventists. I want you to come back to church tomorrow morning. In so doing, you'll be obeying Jesus. Let me say it again. I am inviting you, come to church tomorrow morning. Those of you who came tonight, come back tomorrow morning. Those of you online, wherever you are, if there's a church near you, a Seventh-day Adventist church, choose right now to attend tomorrow morning. In Sorry. so doing, you will be obeying Jesus. And Jesus says, Ye are my friends. If you do whatsoever I command you. And it was Jesus on Mount Sinai who said, Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days shalt thou labor and do all thy work. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. In it thou shalt not do any work. Thou nor thy son nor thy daughter. Thy manservant, nor thy maidservant, nor thy cattle, nor thy stranger that is within thy gates. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea and all that in them is, and rested the seventh day. Wherefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. Come to the service tomorrow morning. Obey Jesus. He tells you, you want to be my friend? Do whatsoever I command you. And to those of you whom I addressed earlier, having heard what you heard tonight, do not go back to those churches on Sunday morning. Do not go back. You cannot receive the truth so plainly and then go back. Say to God, Father, my eyes have been opened. I have been deceived. What is my next step? Guide me. Direct me. Having heard the truth, do not go back on Sunday morning. Friends in high places. When God made Adam, and it was Jesus Christ who created, here's what he said. Let us make man in our image. God has always wanted to fellowship with us. I want you to look like me. I want you to behave like me. I want us to be friends. I want you to have a friend in high places. How many of you will say, Father, Help me to obey Jesus, my friend, in high places. Can I see your hand? Help me to obey Jesus Christ. Stand up with me. Stand up with me. Stand up with me. Let me make this call very boldly. If anyone listening to me is not a Seventh-day Adventist, and we do have some visitors, I want you to come back tomorrow morning. Come back tomorrow morning. Right here. Jesus Christ will be pleased. And for those on you online, wherever you are, 
If you're not a seven day Adventist, make a decision right where you are. I will attend the service tomorrow morning. By the grace of God, I will come to hear more of the truth that makes me free. And for those of you who are Adventists, bring someone. Pray first. Then invite. Always pray first. Then invite. Because the devil will try to block your invitation. So before you invite someone, you pray. You say, Father, give me favor in the sight of this person. Then invite. Heads bowed, eyes closed. Our Father in heaven, we thank you for your word, which is so plain very often so blunt and so hard to take but it saves the god it transforms it delivers it opens the eye and it sets the captive free from the bondage of error father we thank you for what we've learned about the gift of tongues and what it takes to be a friend of jesus and what it takes is simple obedience dear god for those who listen to me whose culture spiritually is to worship in churches where everyone speaks in tongue at the same time and nobody interprets, nobody understands. There's great confusion. I ask in the name of Jesus Christ, dear God, grip that person's heart right now, possess the person's mind, and lead the person in the path of obedience. Bring that person to this service tomorrow or wherever the person may be, that he or she may receive more light from the throne of grace. Dear God, escaping error is not easy because when a person becomes accustomed to error, the person values error above truth. So it requires divine power like dynamite to free someone from error. But do this work, dear God, because you're not willing that any should perish. We thank you for the gift of tongues. We thank you for all the spiritual gifts, but we thank you the Bible tells us how they ought to be practiced. Now, dear God, as we travel to our homes, take us safely, protect us from harm and danger. Bring us back tomorrow, I pray, to this place and the other sites where this service is being shown. Hear my humble pray, God. Save us when you come. In Jesus' name, let God's people say, Amen and Amen. <laughs>